Hello everyone, I want to welcome you to the very first Electrifying Insights video. And you join me in the beautiful city of Chattanooga, Tennessee. And today I'm here with my 2018 Tesla Model 3 long range rear wheel drive with about 78,000 miles. And today we're going to be taking a little road trip to from Chattanooga all the way about 650 miles to the Outer Banks of North Carolina, as far east as you can get to the coast. And we're just gonna see how this car performs nowadays since it's a 2018, it has a bit of degradation, not exactly the sure number, or I'm not sure of the exact number right now, but maybe I'll do that in a future video degradation test. But for now, we're gonna take this long road trip, see how the charging stops are, how the charging performance is, and the range. But before I get into all the details about what state of charge we're leaving at, what the route's gonna look like, I gotta take a quick stop at Costco and I'll catch you guys up on all the details in a second. Alright guys, we just pulled up to Costco and look at what we have over here. It's an Ionic and ugh, I can't talk. It's an Ionic 6. I've actually never seen one of those in person before. Kinda looks like a kidney bean or some type of bean. I don't know. Aerodynamic, I guess, but it's a nice car. But anyway, I'm going to hop in Costco real quick. I'm going to make this as quick as possible. I'm just going to grab some items. And of course, I can't go to Costco without getting pizza. So I'll be back with you guys in a second. Alright guys, we're back at the Model 3. This is what she looks like from the front. This is the discontinued silver color that I kind of wish they'd bring back. But what we've got on here is the 19 inch sport wheel, so a little less inefficient. I believe the original rated range on this was 310 miles and that was with the aero wheels. So I believe with the sport wheels it'd be around 290 when it was brand new. But definitely not the case anymore because of the uh, 78,000 miles we have on this car. But let me get in and show you what the route's gonna look like and what the estimated range is. All right guys, so we're in the 2018 Model 3 long range with 77%. I was at 79 when I left, but I drove a little crazy to Costco and I'm gonna try not to drive crazy like that for this trip because I want to keep it as efficient as possible. But I put in the address, the Tesla route planner did its thing. I don't know if I'm gonna follow this completely because this right here, the last charging stop in Rocky Mount, North Carolina, terrible charger. It's barely, it's a V2 which is not good to begin with, but it's like the lowest of low when it comes to V2s. It, it, most of the time it charges at 50 kilowatts, which we really don't want to go for. So it wants us for this whole journey about 650, I think it's 665 miles, wants us to start, um, stop in Knoxville at 550 and take three more stops after that. And we should get home with 12%. We'll see about that but I'll keep you guys updated and let's get this drive started. One thing I forgot to mention in the previous clip is I reset trip A so we have a clean slate on that so we can keep track of our distance, our total energy used, and our efficiency. And as you can see down here, we have about 78,523 miles on this car. And I've gotta say, for that many miles, it's, it's doing really good. Besides, you know, the classic Tesla squeaking and rattling. It's not that bad, but it's mostly from like over here because build quality. One last thing I want to mention is throughout this trip, I will not exceed 10 miles over the speed limit. I want to keep this trip as efficient as possible, but not going super slow like a snail. <laughs> I want to drive this car like a normal consumer would. We're going to go according to the Tesla trip planner, follow it, maybe not perfectly, but we'll follow it as much as possible without, you know, losing too much time. And I'll keep you guys updated throughout the whole drive and let's get started. So just to make it clear what we're doing here, we're driving all the way from Chattanooga, Tennessee, all the way to Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina, which is located in the Outer Banks of North Carolina, and the approximate distance is about 680 miles, give or take a few. Just pulling out of Costco, and apparently my backpack there needs a seat belt. That won't be happening, I guess we're going to be dealing with that the whole time, but I guess Tesla's seat detection is not the greatest. 
made a quick little pit stop to get some energy drinks because I'm definitely going to need it considering the map says we're going to get there at like 4.20 in the morning. But right now with 75%, 227 miles. Doubt we'll get that, but <laughs> we're going to try. We're going to get there with 33%. It's 99 miles away. I don't know if we're heading into some bad weather. I saw something on the radar, but this might not be the most efficient drive, but we'll see how it goes. Quick little update, the car decided to reroute us to a supercharger that's a little further than the original one, thankfully, because it said we were going to get there like 37%, which I think was kind of stupid, but we're going to get to, not even going to try how to pronounce that, with 25%, and yeah, just a little update, we will update you with the supercharger. Alright, so we just pulled up to the Bucky's in somethingville, Tennessee. It says we need to charge here for 10 minutes. Gonna open up the charge port right here, grab the handle, and we should be good. Let's see. Starting to charge. Nine minutes remaining to continue trip, and it should ramp up. All right, we're ripping at 252 kilowatts. And let's go check our trip card real quick. So we left at 77%. We arrived at 23%. And we drove 128 miles and burned 300, excuse me, not 350 kilowatt hours, 35 kilowatt hours. That'd be absolutely atrocious if we could do that in this vehicle. And our average energy consumption was 274 watt hours per mile, which is like, I want to say around four-ish miles per kilowatt hour, which is not bad. So eight minutes left, and then we'll be off to Old Fort, North Carolina, and get to that supercharger with at 8:27 p.m. Slight correction: I said 274 watt hours per mile was around four miles per kilowatt hour. It's actually around three and a half miles per kilowatt hour, which is still not bad. But just wanted to give that little correction. And we're at 41%, we're going 162 kilowatts, five minutes remaining to continue trip, and we should be good to go. All right, the car just told us we have enough charge to continue on the trip, and let's go ahead and unplug. All right, and the car says we're gonna get to the supercharger in Old Fort with 7%, that's a lot better. All right, let's get going. Quick little update on the drive. We're about 26 minutes from the supercharger. It says we're gonna get, oh, just switch to dark mode. Uh, it looks like we're gonna get there with 8% state of charge, which is a little better than it was originally uh, estimating. And we're at, for this current drive, 288 watt hours per mile, which is about three and a half miles per kilowatt hour, so not bad at all. Uh, Preconditioning right now. And just thought I'd do a, a shameless plug for my, <laughs> website electrifyinginsights.com I uh, just got an email from Google that they rejected our AdSense application because of quote low quality or excuse me low value content so not the most encouraging thing to hear on this drive but if you guys want to support me and my my little business the one man show over here uh, just go to electrifyinginsights.com if you want to show the love and support and help grow help, help us grow a little bit All right, guys, we just pulled up to Old Fort, North Carolina. We have 9% state of charge, which is better than what the trip planner was saying. And it says we're supposed to be here for 20 minutes. And up next, we got a pretty long stretch of two and a half hours. So let's go ahead, plug this thing in. All right, all plugged in, ready to go. Starting to charge. 
All right, we're ramping up. We're at 128 kilowatts right now. And let's go to the trip cards. And we've driven so far 248 miles, burned 68 kilowatt hours worth of energy, and I've had an average energy consumption of 272 watt hours per mile, which is about still three and a half miles per kilowatt hour. So not bad. Slowly ramping up. Hopefully we can reach a uh, full 250 because I have had some issues on these specific chargers before, but pretty empty station. We'll be here for a minute. Really pretty sunset over here in the mountains, but yeah, I'll catch up with you guys in about 20 minutes. All right, we've officially finished charging enough for this part of the trip. It's pretty dark outside now, so let's go ahead and unplug, get back in the car. All right, we're leaving with 69%, nice. Uh, let's continue and let's get out of here. Two hours and 15 minutes, 152 miles, the car's projecting. We'll get there with 6% state of charge. And we're currently, what does the car say up here? Never trust this, by the way, it's never really accurate, but it says 208 miles, supposedly. Uh, clearly not true, but I mean, it's somewhat close. But let me stop blabbing on, let's get going. So we've barely been driving, what, five minutes, something like that? And the warning's gone, because I was going 80, but it said, please stay below 75 miles an hour to get to your destination. So, guess we're sticking to 70, and the car says 5% state of charge at arrival, so I'm gonna play it safe. Don't really wanna end up dead on the road. Not really playing it out of spec style. If you don't know that YouTube channel, go and follow them. They do a bunch of amazing, videos regarding EVs and yeah I'm not trying to push it to zero percent like they do but kudos to them that's just not my thing but we'll keep on traveling on and I'll keep you guys updated all right guys quick little update it's currently 9 13 at night clearly um, and our efficiency is going down a little bit because we've been kind of still going through the mountains up and down. It keeps kind of wavering a little bit, but we're at 291 watt hours per mile, which is around 3.4 miles per kilowatt hour. Still not bad. And hour and 42 minutes to the supercharger in somewhere in North Carolina, McLeansville. We're gonna be there for 15 minutes and we're supposed to get there with 7% state of charge. So, sorry about the bumps, guys. It's, the roads are not great around here. So I'll catch you guys in a minute. Cruising along at 80 miles an hour at 10 p.m. apparently with my high beams on. I don't know how long I've had those on. Whoops. Uh, so we just passed the 10 p.m. mark. We're gonna get to the supercharger at 6% in 47 minutes. And we're definitely whipping out more of the Celsius because I'm getting a little bit tired. But we're pushing through because our arrival time, auto, oops, our arrival time is 3.51 a.m. This is going to be a fun night. So just wanted to give you guys a little update and I'll catch you at the supercharger. All right, pulling up to the supercharger at this Shell gas station. And we're about to plug in and I'll give you a little update on our numbers. Just parked at the stall. There's another Model Y here. And we just got here with 4%. That's what I love to see. I love knowing these superchargers love. It gives me like an adrenaline rush. <laughs> but we're just gonna go ahead and plug her in. And then I'll show you guys the trip card. Ramping up, only 12 minutes at the supercharger. So that's not bad at all. Uh, so, so far we've draw, driven 401 miles and burned 110 kilowatt hours worth of energy. And we've kept it the same about three and a half miles per kilowatt hour. So we're doing pretty good. Getting up 131 kilowatts. Oh, well, I hope it goes up. Uh, but anyway, our next supercharger is the one I have personal beef with. The Rocky Mount charger is one of the worst superchargers I've ever been to. Tesla, please update this one or something. It's terrible. It's barely a version two. And last time I was there, I could not get past 55 kilowatts, and every time I'd switch stalls, it would just get worse, and so that really, really delayed my trip by a, a lot, and so I'm really hoping that doesn't happen again, but I'm going to try and see if I can, like, just use a different one or get around that, 
I'm gonna do a little bit of route planning and figure that out really quick. All right, so I figured out a plan. This is much better than stopping at that stupid Rocky Mount <laughs> supercharger. Uh, so we're still ripping at 207 kilowatts. For some reason, it says enough to continue trip, which is definitely not true. I mean, if we want to get there with three, eh, I might do it. Probably not though. Let's play it safe with a little more percentage, but we're gonna completely avoid Rocky Mount. We're gonna stop at Nightdale, which is gonna be our last charging stop. We're gonna be there for, this is the longest one, 25 minutes. And then we'll hopefully get home at 343. Uh, probably want to. We'll see. We'll see if I'll be there for longer than 25 minutes. Four percent's cutting it a little close, but uh, I'll keep you guys updated once I unplug and figure out what exactly is going on. All right, just ran to the bathroom real quick and got back. We're at a not so good 49 kilowatts, but that's fine because we have more than enough to get to Nightdale with 16 percent. So let's go ahead and unplug, and then we're gonna hop in and get on going. And we're off to Nightdale, North Carolina, our last charging stop. Hopefully, I think it will be. I'm pretty confident in that. <laughs> Little bit of a detour here. We're 17 minutes away and the on-ramp to the interstate is closed for some reason. So we gotta do a little UE at a light over here and then we'll make our way on to I-440 East, I believe. Here we go. There we go. <laughs> all right, we're pull, whoa, that is a median. <laughs> we're almost, all right, well, almost didn't make it to the charger, but we're here now, it's at a plaza and grocery store, which is not the best thing in the world, but we'll make it work. All right, last charging trip of the, what am I saying? Last charging stop of the trip. I can't park and talk at the same time. Let me park and then I'll catch you guys up. All right, hopefully now I can speak English. We got here at 9% and it's currently 12.14 in the morning and I'm starting to feel it a little bit. But that's okay, we're gonna make it. And let me just plug on in and show you guys the numbers. All right, and we're starting to charge. Apparently we're only supposed to be here for 15, 12 minutes. That's really quick. Huh, all right, well, I don't mind, but let's go to our trips. And so far we've traveled 480 miles, burned 131 kilowatt hours. I guess not burned, used, my bad. Um, our average energy consumption is still at a solid uh, three and a half ish miles per kilowatt hour. So I'm gonna sit here and wait for it to charge. We're ramping up, going a lot smoother than the last charge. There we go, 253, beautiful. All right, so I'll be here for the next 12 ish minutes and I'll catch you guys up at the end of the charge. Just sitting here and uh, really wishing that Lowe's grocery store is open because I'm starting to feel a little bit tired and I could use some more of, uh, of these, but it's okay, we'll make it through. I have a little bit left and only a little bit of the trip left. We got three hours and 22 minutes. I got this, we got this. I'll keep myself alive because I want to upload this video. So here we go, All right, a little update through the charge. Uh, I don't know what's going on with this thing, but it says enough charge to continue trip. Negative 3%. What? <laughs> that doesn't sound like enough to me. So we're gonna go for probably 10 more minutes because I, I wanna have a little bit of a buffer. I don't wanna get there at like 1% because that's just a little iffy to me. So I think it is gonna be the original 20-ish minutes like it predicted, I don't know why it changed. But we're gonna keep going, we're gonna be keep juicing this thing up and I'll let you guys know what percentage we're leaving at. All right, we stayed here for a few more minutes. It says charging complete to 80% and it says we're gonna get there with 5%. So it's a little low, but I think we can make it, especially if we don't, you know, speed like crazy. And we are off. All right, so we got a little warning pop-up that says stay below 65 miles per hour to reach your destination. And it says we're gonna get there with 4%. Uh, we'll see about that. I There is a supercharger right before my home, 
Uh, I might stop there just to play it safe, but I'm gonna figure that out the closer we get. And it just went up to five, per oh, just went back down, just kidding. <laughs> we'll figure this out. I, d I don't think we'll have to stop again, maybe, but I will update you guys when we get closer because we got a whole three hours and five minutes left, so. I'll catch you guys a little closer to the coast. So just a little update a few minutes down the road, the car decided to reroute and it wants me to stop in an hour and a half for only five minutes at a supercharger. It's a V2, but I'm only gonna have to be there for five minutes anyway. I was getting a little bit nervous about getting there with 4%, but because the distance between this supercharger and the next is a, li a, a little bit of a distance. So I'm glad it's playing it safe because remember, we're trying to take this trip as an average consumer, we're not trying to push it too far. But that's honestly, it's kind of, honestly kind of my bad. I should probably should have stayed at the last superchargers for a few more minutes. But, oh well, it is what it is. This is how st stuff happens. So we're gonna get to the supercharger in Plymouth, North Carolina with 35%, and we'll stay there for less than five minutes, and then we'll be able to make it home easily. We're about to pull into the supercharger at this Holiday Inn Express, which is convenient because we are going to make an express stop, if that even makes sense. Because these are <laughs> these are only 120 kilowatt units. They've been here since I think like 2014, so they're old, but they're one of the more reliable V2s. So we're gonna be here for maybe five minutes so we can continue our trip because if we left right now, we'd get there with 0%. We maybe could make it. I don't really want to risk that. <laughs> so we're going to get plugged into one of these V2s and I'll show you what our stats are looking like in one second. These are one of the thick cables. I haven't used a V2 in a while. Woo, it's a big cable. All right, we're back in the car. It says we'll be in here for five minutes. We're juicing up at 113 kilowatts. It is just almost 2.30 in the morning. Really feeling it. <laughs> uh, so the current drive in the past 111 miles, we were, our efficiency, uh, bleh, efficiency dropped quite a bit to like around 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour. Not entirely sure why, but in total, We've driven 591 miles, used 165 kilowatt hours worth of energy, and have stayed around similar three and a half miles per kilowatt hour on average. And after this charge, we have the final stretch, an hour and 15 minutes, 73 more miles. We should get there at 3.44 a.m., which is not bad, honestly. So... I'll catch, catch up, catch, bleh, catch up with you guys once the charge is complete. Man, I'm getting a little delirious over here. All right, that was a quick little splash and dash, so we can get out of this slow V2 and we can make it to the final stretch back home at 3:49 in the morning. Getting there with eight percent. Let's get this party started. Or drive, not so much of a party because I'm really not enjoying myself right now. So actually in this Shell gas station right over here in Columbia, North Carolina, there's a 200 kilowatt CCS free wire charger, which has proven itself to be extremely unreliable. It broke about a month after it opened. It's working now again, but who knows how long that'll last. But man, they should really build a V3 supercharger in these parts for those for the people with the CCS vehicles because Man, that charger's not the best, especially since it's only one. Not a good, not a good situation. All right, guys, we're cruising on this bridge, 60 miles an hour at 3:35 in the morning. And once we get off this thing, we're officially gonna be on the Outer Banks. Then we'll only be a few more miles from home. This trip is so close to being over. If you guys are curious. Uh, 
current drive, 287 watt hours per mile. Not bad. So, once we get off this bridge, oh, the end is near. It's in sight. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. And here we are. Welcome to Roanoke Island. Welcome to the Outer Banks. We made it. That bridge felt like a whole eternity and a half, but man, we made it. So close. Only a few more miles. And then we get to, well, I get to go to bed. Oh, this is, the end is going to be so exciting. So right over here at the Outer Banks Mall in Nagshead, we have our very first version 3 supercharger. 12 stall here on the Outer Banks. For the longest time, we only had an 8 stall V2, which was really suffering because it's this is such a high tourism area. It's just sharing power. It was just abysmal charging there. But that, that new supercharger is really good. So... For any of you people with CCS vehicles that have access to superchargers, that's really your only option here. I actually wrote an article uh, recently about the CCS desert out here on the Outer Banks, so if you want to go check that out, go to uh, electrifyinginsights.com. But yeah, really nice supercharger, and that's <laughs> that's about all we've got here, but I'm glad we have at least that. So once again, a couple more miles home, and I'll give you our stats for the whole trip and give you... Uh, all my thoughts and we finally made it back at wow exactly 4 a.m. 8% and I parked it says battery very low so recommend charging now let's do that let me pull out my little adapter all right we got the Tesla J1772 home charger because we got an Audi e-tron right here also let me know if you guys want to see any videos on that and let's get this thing plugged in. And then let me get back in the car and give you guys my final thoughts. And we finally come to the end of this road trip. And it only took about 11 and a half hours, which is almost on par with how it was with a gas vehicle when I had one. But overall, my thoughts is getting a older Model 3, for example, is it worth it now? And I would say absolutely yes, because it's crazy to me that these cars are under $20,000 now. and But I would say, I would suggest, if you're going to go for an older Model 3, go for a long range. Don't go for any like mid-range or standard range plus from back in the day. Because I had, trust me, I had a standard range plus and it was trash. <laughs> that thing, it, it took my trip, this trip, like 14 hours with that. It was, it was really bad. So I would either go for a long range or ones that have the LFP battery pack. Those are those are going to be really solid for long road trips. And for under $20,000, it's like a steal. I've seen some for $16,000. So overall, pretty successful trip. I hope you guys enjoyed this, this video and me documenting this experience. Let me know what other content you want to see. If you want to see something with this Model 3, if you want me to make some content with the e-tron over there. And... My dad has an F-150 Lightning, so maybe I can do some content with that too. Uh, I just want to ask that you guys, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, go check out electrifyinginsights.com if you want to see some more EV insights and little articles I write. And again, thank you guys for watching. I'm going to go to bed, and I'll catch you later. Matthew from the future here, filled with loads more energy than he was at the end of that video over there. I suppose I was so tired that I completely forgot to mention that we traveled a total distance of 673 miles on that trip, and our average efficiency stuck around 280 watt hours per mile, which was 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour. So, not bad overall. Pretty efficient trip.